In this video, we will be going through questions 1 through 12 from the January 2020 Geometry Regents exam. All right, in number one, in the diagram below, line FAD is parallel to line EHC, and segments ABH and BC are drawn. It gives us a couple of angle measurements, so let's start by filling those in. Angle FAB is 48 degrees, and angle ECB is 18 degrees, and we're looking for the measure of angle ABC. The first thing I notice is this angle looks like it is an acute angle, less than 90. So it is going to be very likely, assuming this is drawn to scale, that choice four is incorrect. Um, and we'll verify that mathematically too. All right, if we know we have parallel lines, one thing you always want to look for is a Z shape. It could be a forward or backward Z. But I see, for instance, a Z shape right in here. And the angles that are in the corner of the Z shape are alternate interior angles. And whenever the lines are parallel, alternate interior angles are congruent. Okay, the next thing that I see, and I'll highlight here um, in a different color, just to show you, is I have a triangle. Every triangle has an interior angle sum of 180 degrees. So if I take 180, subtract 48 and 18, I get 114. And then I know that these two are supplementary, so 180 minus 114 gives us our answer of 66 degrees, choice three. Number two, a, a cone has a volume of 108 pi and a base diameter of 12. Let's keep in mind that means the radius is six. What is the height of the cone? Anytime you see volume, head to your reference sheet in the back of your region's exam to grab the volume formula. So here's volume of a cone. I'm going to substitute in all of the values that we know, and we're going to solve for h. I'm going to solve this algebraically. You could also, if you want to, just start plugging in the answer choices in for h and see if it gives you 108 pi. That would work fine. Uh, when I solve this, if I have pi on both sides, I'm just going to immediately cross them out, and I'm going to simplify this. So on the right-hand side, I have one-third of 6 squared. So that's a third of 36. So that's 12h. And I'm going to divide both sides by 12. So 108 divided by 12, and I get that the height is 9. Number three, triangle JGR is similar to triangle MST, which statement is not always true. For a question like this, it is intentional that they are not giving you the picture, so let's draw one. Don't worry about it being drawn accurately. We don't know much about these triangles besides the fact that they're similar. So likely they are the same shape, but different sizes. What is important though, is that the when you draw it, that the letters correspond. So since J is listed first and M is listed first, those should be in the same spot in the triangles. The same with G and S, the same with R and T. Whenever you have similar triangles, the corresponding angles are congruent to one another. So choice one is saying angle J and angle M are congruent. That's true because they correspond to each other. Two is saying angle G and angle T correspond. That not is not necessarily true because look, they do not match. They don't have matching locations. If I just verify that, choice three, R and T are in the same location. G and S are in the same location, so it is definitely choice two. Angle G and angle T are not necessarily congruent. Four, in parallelogram ABCD, diagonals AC and BD intersect at E, which statement proves it's a rect rectangle? This is, again, and they are not giving you a picture. I would 100% go in and do that. So you can draw a parallelogram here. I know we're talking about making it a rectangle, and we'll, we'll reference that when we're kind of going through the facts of the answer choices here. So it says we have the two diagonals, AC, BD, and they intersect at E. Which statement proves it's a rectangle? Okay, well, choice one. If AC and BD were congruent, that means if the diagonals, that's what this is saying, the diagonals are congruent, does this make this a rectangle? Okay. Choice two, A, B, and B, D. This is saying that a side and a diagonal are perpendicular. Choice three is saying 
the diagonals are perpendicular. And choice four is saying that a diagonal is basically bisecting an angle. So if you have memorized your facts about quadrilaterals, we have to think about, well, which one of these facts that I wrote out here is true about a rectangle? And that would be choice one. In a rectangle, the diagonals are congruent. Okay. If you wanted to and you drew your picture as a rectangle and you draw in your diagonals, you should see that they do look congruent to one another. Number five, the endpoints of directed line segment PQ have these coordinates, we want to partition it into a one to three ratio. This is one of my favorite regions questions because it's like a giveaway that they are putting one of these on the regions and just changing the numbers. I would suggest doing these graphically. So what I would do, so I have our two coordinates here. We have negative seven, negative five, and we have five, three, and we want a one to three ratio. What I would do is in your regions exam booklet, I would go to the back Okay, so I'm going to scroll in my digital copy here and find the scrap graph paper. Okay, once you have that, you do have to, on the graph paper, draw in your own axes. Okay, so use your straight edge that you bring to the exam with you to draw axes. Just adjust that. And now we are going to plot our points. So the first point we were given was negative 7, negative 5. And the second point was five, three. Once you have those two points plotted, a key step in doing this graphically is to make sure you have a nice straight line connecting those two points. Don't freehand it, okay? Because what we need to do is we need to split this line segment into a one to three ratio, which means that there should be four parts because one plus three is four. If you do a nice straight line, sometimes it's easier to do by just kind of eyeballing it and looking for where the line segment crosses the corners of the coordinate plane. And this wouldn't work necessarily if the answer is a decimal, but most of the time on the regions, it's not a decimal answer. They're integers. So I can see that it works here and I have split this line segment into four congruent parts. If you have trouble eyeballing it, use the slope. So I can see that in this problem that the slope is going up 8 and then over 12. Since we need four parts, let's divide each of those values by 4 and I get up to over 3. And now if you watch, if I highlight here um, in a different color, up to over 3, up to over 3. And this helps me find my points. Okay. All right, we're looking for the point that splits it into a one to three ratio, and that is this point right here, because there's one little line segment to the left, and there's three line segments to the right. So now we just have to find the coordinates of that point, and it looks like it is negative four, negative three. So let's go back to the question, and on your regions, you can um, rip out, you can see the tear here, there. You can rip out the graph paper so that it's right next to you when you're working on the problem. And I'm looking for a negative four, negative three, so choice four. Okay, number six, in trapezoid A, B, C, D below, A, B is parallel to C, D. So I'm just going to mark those as parallel. A, E is 5.2. E, uh, A, C is 11.7. I noticed that they're giving me that whole diagonal. So what I'm going to actually do just to label it a little cleaner in my picture is I'm going to find the length of E, C, which if I subtract those values, I get 6.5. CD is 10.5, and we're looking for the length of AB, so I'm just going to put an X on that side. So if we take a look at this picture, these two triangles are going to be similar to one another, and that's because they have all congruent angles, or their corresponding angles are congruent. We know that because of the parallel lines and the transversal. There's that Z shape again that I mentioned earlier in the video, um, and the vertical lines too. So this means that we can set up a proportion to solve. So 5.2 corresponds to the 6.5 and X corresponds to 10.5. All right, let's cross multiply. 6.5 times X is just 6.5 X. 5.2 times 10.5 gives me 54.6. And we're going to divide by 6.5 on both sides. 
and I get x is 8.4. Let's say you saw this question and you had no idea what to do. I would look at your answer choices and see if there's anything you can eliminate. AB definitely looks smaller than DC, so I would have said choice four is not a good option. And you might have also been able to reason that it wasn't choice one because we already know these line segments that are 5.2 and 6.5, and AB doesn't really look smaller than those. So at least then you get a choice between two and three, and you can increase your odds of getting the problem right. Okay, number seven, Kayla was cutting right triangles from wood to use for an art project. Two of them are shown below. If the triangles are similar, it gives us BC is 15, AC is 17. What is the measure of angle F to the nearest degree? Okay, the Regents has been using these questions a little bit more frequently um, in the last couple of years. So basically, when you are trying to find angle F, you're looking at that picture and you're like, well, I don't have any of the values. Right. So the key is that whatever angle C is, angle F is going to be the same thing because those triangles are congruent to one another. So let's just find angle C. Let's just put X in there for uh, the measure that we're looking for. So I have the opposite side here, the adjacent side, the hypotenuse. I'm going to use cosine. So cosine of X equals 15 over 17. And I'm going to use my calculator. Check your mode. Make sure you're in degree mode. And I'm going to do inverse cosine. So x is equal to inverse cosine 15 over 17. And I'm going to type that in. Hit the second button to get that inverse cosine in the calculator. And to the nearest degree, I have 28 degrees. So again, we solved for c, but c and f are congruent angles. Number eight, the line represented by 2y equals x plus 8 is dilated by a scale factor centered at the origin, a scale factor of k centered at the origin. The image is y minus 1 half x equals 2. What is the scale factor? All right, the first problem I see here is that neither of these equations is in y equals form. So let's start with the pre-image, 2y equals x plus 8. If I divide everything by 2, I get y equals 1 half x plus 4. So this is my pre-image. For the image, we are given y minus 1 half x equals 2, get y by itself, and I get y equals 1 half x plus 2. That's the equation of my image. To figure out the scale factor, try and see what was the y-intercept multiplied by. And in this case, it was multiplied by 1 half, so choice 1. Number nine, in quadrilateral ABCD below, AB is parallel to CD. E, H, and F are the midpoints of their sides. So if E is the midpoint of AD, I'm just going to put some tick marks there to mark that off. H is the midpoint of AC, and F is the midpoint of BC. If AB is 24, CD is 18, and AH is 10, we're looking for the length of FH. So if AH is 10, I already know AH and HC are congruent, so I'm going to put a 10 over here as well. And HF is something called a mid-segment. A mid-segment is simply a line segment that connects two midpoints, and I know H and F are midpoints already. And a mid-segment is always half the side that it is uh, parallel to in that triangle. So I'm looking at this triangle here. So if um, we know that side AB in this case is 24, FH must be half of that, and that must be 12, and that's choice three. 10, Jaden is comparing two cones. The radius of the base of cone A is twice as large as the radius of the base of cone B. The height of cone B is twice the height of cone A. The volume of cone A is. For a problem like this, this could be very abstract for a lot of people. So if you have trouble, you could always just kind of like make up some numbers and, and compare them that way. So let's say we have cone A and we have cone B. The volume of a cone, I'm just going to grab that formula from the reference sheet, is 
uh, volume equals one third pi r squared h. And really when I'm looking at this, both of these formulas have one third involved and they both have pi involved. I mean, the formulas are the same, but the one third is not changing and the pi is not changing. So I really need to compare the R squared H part of each formula because the one third is the same for both cones. The pi is the same for both cones. So we know the radius of cone A is twice as large as the radius of cone B. So let's say we make the radius of cone A 2, and therefore we'll make the radius of cone B 1. The height of cone B is twice the height of cone A. So let's say I make this one and this 2. And you can pick any numbers here. We just need them to be twice. The volume of cone A is 4. The volume of cone B is 2. And now it's a little bit easier for me to see that uh, choice one is correct. The volume of cone A is twice the volume of cone B. 11, a regular hexagon is rotated about its center. Which degree measure will carry the regular hexagon onto itself? I love these questions because it's a nice quick formula. It's 360 divided by the number of sides. This is assuming it's a regular polygon, which it is. So 360 divided by six is 60. And if you're like, well, that's not an answer choice, any multiple of 60 will also work. So which one of these answer choices is a multiple of 60? Choice 3, 120. Okay, number 12, in triangle MAH below, MT is the perpendicular bisector of AH. So perpendicular means I have right angles. Bisector means that it is split into two congruent parts. Which statement is not always true? Okay, one thing I just want to point out too before I actually read these answer choices is that we know MT is congruent to itself by the reflexive property. So I basically know that triangle MAT is congruent to triangle MHT. So let's keep that in mind before we read through our answer choices. All right, choice one says that triangle MAH is isosceles. That is definitely true because AM and HM our corresponding sides and congruent triangles, so those are definitely congruent. Choice two says triangle MAT is isosceles. That could be the case, but I have actually nothing to back that up here because it's only talking about one of the triangles, so this is a question mark for me. Choice three, MT bisects AMH. That's true because we know these two angles up here are congruent. And angle A and angle uh, TMH are complementary. That's definitely true because a triangle has 180 degrees. If we know one angle is already 90, the other two must add up to 90 as well. So our answer here, what is not always true, is going to be choice two, that triangle MAT is isosceles. Head to the next video in this playlist to catch the answers to 13 through 24.